everyone. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Okay, it's time to install our oil pump and our fuel pump. Before I install an oil pump, I like to take a look inside. You can look inside here, and it does look pretty clean, but I like to take the back off, just take a quick look inside, make sure there's nothing dirty or nothing inside. Now that just simply comes apart like that, and push out the gear impeller like that, just take a quick look. And this, this one is really clean. They usually are, but I have on occasion gotten an oil pump that's full of dirty machining oils, but this one is nice and clean. First, we're going to prep it for um, starting up so it helps prime the, prime the pump quicker. And it's not that difficult. You just put some petroleum jelly on the inside, and when you put this back in, now you have, put that back in here, now as this rotates, you have a little bit of a sealant between the vein and the pump part and it will help it prime a little quicker. And then I'll simply just put it back together, make sure everything's lined up right. Tighten up the bolts and we'll put it on. Now there's an o-ring in here that helps seal inside the engine, inside the block. And when you put the gasket on here, you can see there's really two surfaces that need to be sealed. The area right here and the area directly around the circle. So I'll just seal both sides of this gasket, just a little bit on the outside of this circle and this circle on both sides and then we'll install it. Remember, you're not trying to glue these things together, so you don't need a lot. I'm using Renzosil for sealant, um, but like I said, you're not trying to glue these things together, so you don't need a lot. Just enough to hold it in place and to seal it together so when you tighten it up, forms a nice seal there. That's all you need. Not a lot. A little bit of motor oil on the o-ring there will help get it started and help get it in there so it's nice and smooth. Then you just put your bolts in. And the bolts are different length so make sure you get the right ones and the right holes. The really long one goes down here by the oil filter. And tighten at 35 foot-pounds. Crisscross pattern. And to answer everybody's questions, yes, that is Frank snoring in the background. Okay, so the common question is, should I use a high volume oil pump? And I, I answered that a few times in some other videos, and someone commented once saying, well, it can hurt. Well, actually, it can hurt. If you're using a high volume oil pump, if you have not changed to a seven quart pan, if you're using still using a, a standard five quart pan, and you have a high volume oil pump, if you're going around a curve, all your oil is going to slosh to one side. If you're going uphill, all the oil sloshes to the back. And if you have a high volume pump, you could pump all that oil to the top of the engine. And if it doesn't return fast enough, you could end up starving your engine for oil. So if you do go with a high volume pump, at least upgrade to a seven quart pan so you're sure that you never starve the engine of oil. Fuel pump installation starts with the push rod. This is driven off the camshaft, so make sure you put some assembly lube on the end that goes in first, that's going to touch the camshaft, and I have some assembly lube around the outside of the uh, pump shaft as well. Just put that in there. Same thing with the fuel pump. You're not trying to glue these parts together, so just enough sealant there, just to seal 
the block here so no oil leaks out. And this is the side that runs on the um, on the push rod. So you want to have some assembly lube here. So when you slide that in there, you have assembly lube between the fuel pump and the push rod. These go to 30 foot-pounds. And for those of you wondering, I'm using my hand Budge Torque Analyzer. I got it programmed for 30 foot-pounds. So as it comes around, and when it turns green, yellow, red means I hit the 30 foot-pounds. Just makes it a lot easier. I like the programmable ones. 30. There we go. 30 foot-pounds on both. Just check it again. 30. And 30. We're good. We finish this up by putting the pipe plug in where the push rod goes in for the fuel pump. Now, the pipe plug, a couple things. I put some sealing on there because I like to make sure it seals. Um, don't get any on the bottom because you don't want any in the inside of the engine. Also, don't use Teflon tape. Teflon tape is going to dissolve and you'll end up with Teflon tape inside your engine and you won't be happy. So pipe plugs, they uh, seal by swaging threads. Don't go too tight because you can crack the block. And you want to be able to get it out, so don't go too much. With the sealer on there, that's all you need. Now I can just wipe that off. And it'll be nice and clean. So a couple routine tasks there, no big deal. Uh, but you still need to be careful. You don't want to get any sealants on the inside of the engine. That's what you're really trying to protect against. Seal the gasket around the opening, but don't let it get inside. Uh, now that the, with uh, those in place, the block is sealed, and I can get ready to prime the engine. We need to talk about priming. Flat tap it versus roller. Prime, don't prime. What should you do? We'll do that in the next video. Thanks for stopping by Pizza Garage.